HBC Digest Radio, welcome back to our presidential series. Today we are speaking with Wilberforce University President Dr. Alfred Anthony Picard, who is the uh, head of the team that just announced a uh, a major $1.2 million anonymous gift to the institution uh, to support its fundraising efforts uh, as it rounds out the final quarter of its year long uh, fundraising efforts. So, Mr. President, uh, first, great to have you back on. This is a, a sizable gift and uh, the biggest of a, of a series of gifts you guys have received uh, over the last several months from a variety of, of uh, donors and, and corporate uh, friends. What's been the reaction to this gift and where is uh, Wilberforce uh, in relation with this with this support uh, to mm-hmm. its, its, its effort to raise some more resources uh, that will go towards uh, stabilizing and, and reaffirming its accreditation efforts? Great. Well, thank you, Jerry. First of all, let me thank you for this opportunity to speak with your audience about uh, what's going on at Wilberforce. We are, as you might imagine, very excited about uh, about this gift. Uh, there's been an incredible energy and excitement on campus. Uh, this is the first time in a number of months that we've had uh, some really good news. And uh, this suggests that someone other than ourselves believes in, in what we're doing here at Wilberforce and is willing to invest in us uh, and invest in our future despite our our current challenges and, and that's always a good thing and so we are very very excited about uh, the momentum that this gift uh, has provided to the institution and also what it says to to uh, it recraft the narrative about uh, about Wilberforce and we're very excited about that um, with regard to our uh, probation and uh, those efforts uh, of course as you might imagine anything that uh, suggests that there's traction towards us uh, curing our debt and uh, strengthening our financial bottom, bottom line is uh, is going to put us in good stead with with um, with the accrediting body. Uh, they are coming uh, to visit the university actually in November, and uh, we've just sent off uh, the announcement of this gift to uh, our liaison officer at HLC, keeping them abreast of what's going on. So uh, this can't do anything but uh, just make our case even stronger. And uh, and so we're very excited about this and, and what it portends for the future of Wilberforce. So the donor wished to be anonymous and that, you know, that's not unusual in higher education. Um, mm-hmm. But in your conversations and your team's conversations with that person, did they mm-hmm. give any indication about wh- what why was this a good time for such a gift? Uh, you, you know, you've been in the midst of a fundraising campaign throughout the year. You've been all over the place mm-hmm. talking about it. Uh, there's been a lot of traction on social media about it. There's been some mm-hmm. reaction from the community, corporate and individual. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Why was this a good mm-hmm. time for their investment? Well, <clears throat> two things. Uh, one, this was someone ha- that uh, was very familiar with Wilberforce and its place in HBCU history and uh, and really felt just very strongly about that. I mean, uh, in, in one conversation, uh, this person referred to Wilberforce as mother, and I just thought that that was just such an emotional and such a, a powerful uh, depiction of, of Wilberforce. And I've heard that, that said before. And, uh, and I think that, uh, and of course I don't want to speak for the donor, uh, I think that uh, that our position as uh, the nation's first uh, HBCU privately owned and operated by people of African descent, I think that was very meaningful to them. There was also an incident that they brought to my attention, and I don't know whether this was uh, a precipitating event for them uh, for this gift. We have been talking about this for a bit, but uh, there was a local um, outlet, maybe not a local outlet, but there was a, an outlet recently that noted that uh, Wilberforce did not reach its $2 million um, goal, the goal that we had set for June. And that the, um, the headline was just not very positive. It, it didn't speak to what was raised, but in fact it spoke to what was not raised. And I got a phone call about that, and they said, you know, this is just one of those things where, uh, you know, there's good news and there's bad news, and uh, the narrative keeps continuing. Also, in that article, um, one person that was quoted uh, is someone who is really sort of has has been and continues to be, uh, interestingly, the go-to person for all things HBCU. And her comment was (laughs) one... (laughs) <laughs> yeah, her comment, I think we know who we're talking, right. but her comment, uh, essentially she said, and I, and I was trying to pull up the article, actually for this, this call, so I could quote it, but essentially I'm paraphrasing, it said, 
no, they're not going to be able to kind of uh, rally from that. And it really kind of uh, was a death nail uh, for us. And um, I just think that that comment for a lot of people, and certainly for people that are emotionally connected to Wilberforce, was just the kind of how dare you uh, provide such a prognosis without knowing the spirit uh, of this institution and the people who are working hard day to day to turn that around. Um, in, in all honesty, we've been cultivating this for several months. And uh, shortly after that, uh, we got a call and uh, we began uh, the process in earnest. Whether that was uh, an event that, um, that caused this, I don't know. I know how it made me feel and it, made, it emboldened me and it emboldened my new vice president for institutional advancement because I shared the piece with her and her response was just priceless. And this was before she had come up, come on board. And so, um, you know, we have to take all of this in uh, in proper context. You know, we're working here at an institution that came to be at a time when most people, when when people that looked like most of us, uh, people of African descent, were enslaved. And so, I say off often that the idea of Wilberforce was bold and audacious. Can you imagine people who were enslaved in the American South, people in, the, in Ohio suggesting that there could be a, a university and moving ahead and creating a university? That was, uh, that was an incredible um, kind of vision. And uh, that continues to uh, embolden us. And, uh, you know, we've had fires and we've had a major split this instant, uh, that almost decimated Wilberforce in 1947. We've had accreditation issues. We've certainly had our financial issues. And yet, uh, 163 years, this institution still persists. And, um, and you just can't quantify, you can't put your finger on that kind of tenacity and resilience. And for someone to really sort of uh, count us out uh, prematurely, I think just kind of got all of us riled up. So that's all I'll say about that. <laughs> well, uh, I think that's a, that's, a, that's a very kind way of putting it, uh, given the context of who was, who was contacted to talk on it. Um, mm -hmm. The details about this particular gift, uh, you know, in fundraising, there's, there's language used, uh, you know, to signal, you know, what what the intent of the gift is. And this is labeled as a, and correct me if I'm wrong, a matching grant. So does this mean yeah. that that there is here's an investment that we have made and we hope that mm -hmm. people will match it or we will match it once the institution has been able in earnest to to, to raise the same amount? Great question, Jared. I'm glad you asked that because people have been asking about this. Let me say this. The money is in the bank. So <laughs> this <you> <laughs> is, yeah, that, that's important. People have suggested, you know, no, no, we have $1.2 million. The university has that money. In fact, I was insistent that we not do a press release mm -hmm. until we actually had it, until all of the legal, legal out, legal out, legalities were, were, were done. Mm -hmm. And so um, what, the, what this is, and this is a result of now having a vice president who, of institutional advancement who is a seasoned and, and experienced fundraiser, as they were crafting the, the press release, it was, it was she who said, let's make this a matching grant. Uh, a ma uh, let's make this match a match, which means then that we are now challenging folk who care about Wilberforce and who have the wherewithal to match this 1.2 million, if that makes sense. So this was kind of, we have this, let's see if we can match it. And then the, the, the final question I would ask is, so we are, I think that, that the campaign in whole was about $5 million, correct? Yes, it and is. So it we, is. Mm -hmm. we've had a, a micro campaign uh, that goes well over, you know, two or $300,000. You get 1.2 mm -hmm. years. So we're well on our way past 20% of the goal. What is mm -hmm. the, the expectation from the individual and corporate partners, um, mm -hmm. you know, to reach the finish line in a strong way and, you know, to have HLC, you know, again, make the announcement, OK, Wilberforce is good to go. 
Mm-hmm. Well, we are tr- we are valiantly pushing towards that five that five million by December thirty first. I mean that's been our push. Uh, uh, my, as I mentioned, I have a new VP for institutional advancement who has been with us all now of a week and a day, <laughs> a week and two days, <laughs> and and she has come in uh, again, experienced, uh, is laying out a plan, uh, is laying out visits for me, uh, talking about how we can leverage this gift. Um, she has a relationship with and experience with UNCF, so we're talking about how we can leverage that relationship. So what I can say is that that has been our focus and will continue to be our focus to make that $5 million by December 31st. If we don't, we will just continue. Um, and and uh, just continue the work, um, continue to be focused, continue to work hard, um, and to continue to that North Star. But uh, that's sort of where we are now. 